Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Dan Howe. For most of us, our introduction to libraries came at a very young age. Our school library and our local public library introduced us to the magical world of books. We would stroll down the aisles searching for books that would catch our eye and then pour over them page by page. Today, our public libraries still delight young readers with special reading programs throughout the year. On this episode of Libraries Today, we'll take a look at how children's programs in our public libraries impact learning and provide kids with a solid reading foundation. With me now is the Youth Services Consultant for the West Virginia Library Commission, Susie McGinley. Susie, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me again, Stan. I really enjoy it. Well, Susie, what kinds of children's programs do we see in libraries today? Well, we see older programs that we've done for years, like summer reading programs uh, and story times. And we see newer programs, especially with some of the older kids. There are programs on coding now in different libraries, computer coding. Uh, we have um, little robotics, lots of uh, still great book clubs for uh, younger kids and older kids. There's so much great stuff going on in children's li libraries for children and young people in general. You know, which brings me to a point, what role does a library play for kids that are too young to read? What kind of programs do we have for, for those kids? Well, we want to get them early so that we love to have programs like that. We have stuff that we call them a lap sit, where the mothers bring in kids that are still just little guys on their, and they sit on their laps and, and they do songs and the librarian reads them stories and they do motion. A lot of that stuff is really more for the mothers than the kids because it gets them out and about and they can just see how other mothers are doing and they, they don't feel like they're so isolated. So it's great. And then we have uh, toddler story times and preschool story times with, and gets a little more books, a little less uh, movement and a lot, lot of great uh, things before family literacy, where the whole family comes to a story time. Of course, for kids who are a little older, maybe who can read, right? Uh, you, we have to work with our schools. Because I, I know as a kid, I spent a lot of time in the school library yeah. in addition to the public library. Right. So, how closely do public libraries work with schools? Well, it depends on the community. Some uh, schools and public libraries have tremendous collaboration where the librarians will go into the school and do book talks and story times and uh, talk to the um, children about the upcoming summer readings. Uh, some of the West Virginia public libraries are actually right next to the school and are de facto school libraries where the kids will come to the library and uh, will have um, uh, training in how to use a library for older kids and, and just being there in the library. They use it as a, the schools will use the public library as a resource. And there are some schools in this state that don't have libraries. Exactly. And that's when it's really important for good school uh, public library collaboration. It really makes a difference. Susie, let's pay a visit to a library that really emphasizes children's programming. Let's drop by and visit the Jackson County Public Library. Great library. We're here in Ripley, West Virginia, the home of the Jackson County Public Library. This library has a wide range of children's programs, including summer reading schedules, story time, and a lot more. With us now is Melissa Waybright of the Jackson County Public Library. Melissa, thanks for uh, letting us share in what you're doing here today. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you all here. Well, first, tell us about your children's programming. We have story hours for ages 18 months to five years and up. Uh, that's in the spring and in the fall. We have special story hours for special times like Pirate Day or Christmas. We also have crafts that we do. We have a Christmas craft, Halloween craft, just seasonal things that we do. We try to do a couple kids programs every month in the evenings when parents can bring the kids to the library. What's your goal? What's your mission with, with these programs? It's to get kids into the library so that they will read, so they will find out the reading is fun and they'll want to keep reading all through their lives. 
Well, we have a program going on right now behind us, Story Time. You're dressed like a pirate. Yes. <laughs> and you had a, a nice uh, pirate program themed book that you read today. Uh, so tell us about Story Time. I usually do the four and five year old story time. Uh, today we've got kids from 18 months up because one of the other teachers was gone today. So I just had to figure out some story that I knew that would get their attention and that they would love. And then I picked the sea theme because I just love pirates. And then I came up with the game with uh, pin the treasure on the pirate boat. And then I found a craft on Pinterest, my favorite addiction. And we are just drawing, they're painting with their hands, they're painting pirate faces and pirate boats, and our hands show that. <laughs> Looks good. So how many kids are involved in your program? Was well, there probably 20 kids here today? Yeah, that's usually about how many we have. We have more signed up, but you know they always fluctuate whether they get to be here or not. But we usually run about 10 each story hour. Um, the younger story hour, they usually have two different story hours that only meet for 30 minutes. You mentioned summertime programs. How are they different from what you do during school periods? During the summer, we have a real push to get kids to read a lot. We um, have the boys <coughs> excuse me, race against the girls. And so far, the boys are ahead. They, but this year, the girls won. The girls read more books than the boys this year, so they're out for blood this summer. Um, we do... Uh, two different programs for ages 5 to 12 every week, usually a craft program, and then a different, um, like a special speaker, maybe a storyteller or someone to go along with the summer reading theme. Then we also have um, a toddler story hour during the summer that goes along with the theme. Uh, just depends on whatever the theme is, we just focus it on that. Um, and then we have teen programs too during the summer where they do teen things like you know dropping eggs and seeing if they don't break and they did a giant a giant Jenga thing that they all tried to crash and just set things on fire and all kinds of lovely things that teenagers <laughs> like to do. Well the kids seem to be having a great time. What kind of reaction do you get from the kids and from their parents? They love it. They love it. They summer reading they start asking about summer reading around Christmas are we going to do this again are we going to do this again and, and so there's certain things that we always have to include in summer reading we always have a, a treasure hunt around town going to different businesses they ask about that every year um, they start asking about story hour two months ahead of time when is story hour going to be and we have to sometimes we have to sign them up early and call them and say okay now which time do you want to come because they're just looking forward to it so much and then I have the ones that are so sad when they go to kindergarten and they can't come to story hour anymore. And I've got the homeschoolers that keep coming. I had one girl that she started, well, she started coming before she was born because her older sisters were in my story hour. And then she came all the way up to till she was nine. And then she was too bored with my story hour. So she just went and read on her own, which was fine. As long as she's reading and having fun, that's all we care about. So a program like today's, how often does that run? Do you run that all year long? Do you take breaks? How do you schedule that? We usually schedule about four or five story hours in the fall and then four or five in the spring, usually every Friday. Um, we try to catch like Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, those three holidays in the fall, and throw in other you know, things that go along with the fall. Then in the spring, usually we do like March and April. But once we get to May, we're gearing up for summer reading, so we cut out all the story hours because we got to get ready for this big summer. Well, it sounds like a fun time and a great program, and uh, everyone seems to love it. Well, we, we love it. This is my favorite part of this job is getting to do story hour and getting to do crafts and tell stories. So, Well, Melissa, thanks for spending a little time with us. Okay. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Come back anytime. We'd love to have you. Next time you can get paint on you. All right, fair enough. <laughs> When we come back, we'll talk to some of the parents and the kids themselves and see what they think about story time and some of the other programs. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Back here in Ripley, West Virginia, where we're talking to some of the kids and parents about the reading programs here at the Jackson County Public Library. With me now is Jenny Jones. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jenny, so tell me, what, uh, what do you like about these programs? 
Well, I've came a few times with other grandchildren, and it's mm -hmm. very informative. It gives the kids something to do. It gets them interested in the books, and they really enjoy it. Yeah, I, I noticed watching, just watching them in, in uh, taking taking part. They were uh, paid a lot of attention to the, the reading, and they loved the uh, the crafts. Um, so, how often do you bring your granddaughter here? Well, this is only our first time this year. Mm -hmm. This is one of my other granddaughters. Now, I have came for the past three or four years with different grandchildren and did the story hours. What kind of impact did you see on them from these programs? They wanted to read more. They asked questions about different things. They were very involved. So, so you would recommend this program for, for other kids? Definitely. Definitely. I think it's a great thing. Jenny, thanks for coming by. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We really enjoyed it. I'm here with Jake and Cade, two of the uh, patrons here at the Jackson County Public Library. Guys, how are you doing? Good. Good. Okay. So you guys come to the library every once in a while? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. We come a lot. A lot. We come a lot. A lot. So what do you like about the library? Mm -hmm. I like how it, also, it has all the books. I and like how... Mommy can read the books. Oh, you. And, I, and I'm really interested in reading. What's your favorite kind of books? Um, mysteries and chapters. Mysteries and chapters. Jake, what about you? What's I your favorite? I like to hear Mommy read mystery books. Oh, that's, that's the best way of reading books, have your mom read it to you. Yeah. Now, have you, you're still probably, Jake, you're probably still trying to learn how to read, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Cade, you're probably an old hand at reading now, right? Yes. You don't have any problem with that. So, what's what's your favorite thing about coming to the library? Um, books. Books and library class. All right. Well, guys, I appreciate you dropping by and talking with us. I'm going to let you go and enjoy some of the books here at the library. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. With me now are Macy and Jade to talk a little bit about what they like about the library. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you were just in story time, so did you like that? Yeah. What's your favorite part about coming to the library? Um, I like reading books. Reading books. Jade, what about you? Sitting and reading the books. Sitting and reading. Do you guys have favorite books? What's your favorite book? My favorite book is Llama Llama. Llama Llama? I remember that one. Jade, what about you? Do you have a favorite book? Llama Llama, Mr. This is his mama. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Did you guys ever read Good Night Moon? Mm. Oh, that's a good one. So ask, ask, ask your parents about Good Night Moon. That was always one of my favorites. So... When you guys come to the library, what's the first thing you do? Story time. Story time. Now, have you guys started school yet? Mm-hmm. Kindergarten? Mm -hmm. uh, preschool. 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 <laughs> so, so do you do some reading there, too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you guys read, do you like to imagine things and, and that sort of thing? Like with doctors and babies and stuff. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Mm. It is. Well, good. Thank you for talking to us. I'm going to let you go and read some books. How's that? Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. So now I've corralled some of the parents to talk about why their kids come to the Jackson County Public Library and take part in the kids' programs. Uh, ladies, thank you for dropping by. We'll start over here. And what's your name? Cassie McCoy. Cassie, so why why do you bring your kids here? I just want them to have a love of learning and reading. And the more they read, the more knowledge they have. So that's why. Right. Let's go over here. Uh, why do you guys? Well, first, what's your name? My name is Brittany Salvage. Okay, Brittany. Why do you bring your kids? 
Actually, my sister brought me to the, this library when I was a small child. She got me my first library card. She brought me to all the summer reading programs. So now this is actually my youngest daughter that um, comes, but my oldest daughter also did as well. So it's kind of like a family tradition for us um, over the years. We've all participated in it, and my children love it. That's great. What about you? And she loves coming and listening to story time, and she loves reading books, so we always try to participate whenever we can, every activity they have. So. What are the, what's the program you like best? Um, she, probably story time. She loves story time and the summer reading program they do. Okay. What do you guys think? What's, what's the favorite program for your kids? I'd say the summer reading. That's what they like the best. Mine would be both, yeah. I mean, they, they like the summer reading, the activities with that, and going around town to the different businesses because they have activities. Um, but we just recently started story time. She got me interested in it um, since our kids are the same age and they're off school on Fridays. And um, I'm finally able to have the work schedule that I can actually bring her, thankfully, and she, she loves it. So finally, what I wanted to ask you guys is, you bring your kids here, you bring them to the library, whether it's for this program or for whatever, but... What what do you want to see these programs do for your kids? Um, learn to love books and learning. That would be about the same. And, I mean, so far it's worked um, because they'll have books that they read in story time and then she'll want to check that out and take it home. And have to, I mean, if it's catchy phrases, they sing along or recite them. So it's really good um, learning techniques for them. What do you want your kids to take away from all this? Well, I'm a homeschool mother, so <clears throat> we use this as a vital resource for everything that we do. And we come probably two or three times a week, and just the amount of books that they get and just the interest of loving to read. So works out good. Ladies, thanks for taking your time and talking to us a little bit. And thanks for bringing your kids to the library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about kids and libraries. Stick with us. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. Welcome back to Libraries Today. I'd like to thank Melissa Waybright of the Jackson County Public Library and the parents and kids who took time to talk to us today. Now, speaking about those kids, Susie, uh, it was great talking to them and, and seeing their uh, excitement about books and libraries. You've worked with children's programming for a long time. Yes. Uh, what's your experience like with kids? Well, it's, it's really interesting. Kids will just literally say the darndest things, <laughs> and they really enjoy what you do for them. They, they can have the best time with just a, a simple book and uh, a little bitty craft. You don't have to go um, really elaborate because they just have a good time if they know you care and are interested in what they want to do. They have a, they're really great uh, little people. It's really funny. I was so tickled that one of the mothers at, at the Jackson County Library was one of my little story time people. Oh, which it, one? Uh, Brittany. Brittany. And she was, I was just really thrilled, you know, that it's a continuation. So that's been a few years ago. It's been longer than I'd care to say. Hmm. So in working with kids over the years and uh, kids like Brittany. Right. Uh, which has got to be rewarding to see some of the seeds that, that were sown by you all those years ago. She's back in the library with her kids and she's right there with them. Yeah, that just thrilled me to death. And I've seen it with other people, or I've had people that are grown up now, but not real old, uh, say to me, oh, Miss Susie, I remember when you, we did story time and we had such a great time. And they would remember the book and we'd remember what we did. And, and I, got, I take my child to the library or I still go to the library. And it just, uh, or read, whether they go to the library or uh well, now they can go to the library and download books. It's amazing what you, the, the opportunities for books now. What's your, what was your biggest challenge in working with kids in libraries? 
oh gosh, um, making sure that the word got out that the material that we were going to have the program, uh, trying to find a, a space for them at that time. Um, and of course, always a big challenge is making sure you have funding that you can continue that. Those books aren't free, you know, and, and you want to make sure that you get uh, new books and that you uh, get uh, some good ideas on how to do things you want to. You're not just throwing things out. You have a reason for what you're going to do when you're doing a children's programming. Where The, the kids may think it's fun, but they're learning, but they just don't know it, you know. And because we're not school. They don't have to be there. But uh, we're, there, we're sort of sneak teaching, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, yeah. And obviously very rewarding. Oh, it's incredibly rewarding. Uh, it's, there's nothing like uh, uh, knowing that you've helped just a little bit in developing that child into a um, uh, worthwhile adult. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about the role of the WVLC in relation to children's programming across all 172 libraries across the state? Well, uh, we offer them guidance. We offer them uh, chances for continuing education in all kinds of things. But in children's, we're, we offer them uh, programs or uh, ideas for their summer reading programs, for their story time programs. I've had uh, librarians call me and say, uh, I need a list of books of, of a certain type uh, to uh, help a teacher or a parent who wants to guide their child in a particular area, or we need books in this particular subject, and do you have a list of them? Because they don't have time to do you know, all that research. So that's what we do. We also uh, give them, uh, we, we are the state coordinator of the summer reading program, so we're part of the, um, the collaborative, uh, the children's person goes to the meeting, uh, it's a national meeting, we have children's librarians from all over the, the United States and the uh, territories, I mean the guy from American Samoa comes a long way to get there so that we discuss all kinds of things we want to do for summer reading, what we want to do, why we want to do it, how we're going to put it together, because it's a good research-based program uh, that, we, that we work with. And then the commission uh, gets all the manuals and the information and distributes them to the, uh, the public libraries and uh, presents the materials, gives them ideas on what to use, how to use it, what a, a little library can do for not very much money at all with these great programs and ideas. There's some specific programs I know that you work with. The uh, West Virginia Children's Choice Book Award yeah. is something you've worked on for a number of years. Yeah, we went into a hiatus with it for a couple of years, but we're back. Uh, we're selecting books for the 2016-2017 uh, uh, school year. It's a uh, program where we select from quality uh, books for uh, grades three through six, public books that have been published within the last three years. We put the materials together, we send out the information, and the children in the schools or their libraries where they've been uh, get these lists and do these things read uh, some of these books. They have to read at least three to vote, and they get to choose what they think is their favorite of this list. And it's fascinating to see what they'll choose, where you think this is a great book, but they like something else, because it's the kids are choosing, not the adults. Well, I mean, we're narrowing it down, you know? Well, and another important program that I know the WVLC is heavily involved with, it, Letters About Literature. Oh, yeah. More for the older kids, but it's also for some of the elementary school Well, kids. it starts, I think, in the fourth grade and goes up through high mm -hmm. school. Uh, and what they do is they write a letter to their favorite author about how that book has either changed their life or made them see something that they didn't be, wasn't aware of before, how it affected them. And the author doesn't have to be alive. Um, Louisa May Alcott gets, uh, gets letters. Uh, uh, Anne Frank gets a lot of letters, bless her heart. Uh, there are just uh, some, it's amazing. Uh, what these kids will read, and it's amazing that it's not necessarily kids you think are going to be the big um, 
readers. Some of these kids have maybe only read three or four books, but one of them has really gotten them. We've had football boys, uh, uh, real shy kids, real active kids, all kinds of kids will uh, read these books and write to the author. And uh, it's just a wonderful program. And then after they've been um, uh, selected from the national, from the thousands and thousands, the, the ones from the best come back to us from, for West Virginia kids, and we select the top winners. They're all terrific, though. It's a great program. Uh, and, and, you know, and speaking of the various programs you've worked with over the years, uh, how have things changed? What have you seen change from, from the time you started in libraries to where we are today? Well, technology has made a big difference. Uh, there's a computer in every library now. So the, it's a lot easier for these small libraries to come up with ideas for, say, crafts or programs because they can go on to various, like the West Virginia Library Commission site, uh, Pinterest that, that um, I know Melissa mentioned has given like incredible uh, opportunities for them to find great crafts and great programs. Uh, uh, there are so many uh, sites, out, educational sites out there where they can find great materials for a program. Book lists, the um, the book, uh, the uh, database that we have, Novelist Plus, where they can make their own book lists. Uh, it's much, it has facilitated the getting all ideas and knowledge, not just to the big libraries, <clears throat> but to the little one and two person libraries all over the state. As you look at, at where you've come from, where do you see libraries in the future along with children's programming? Where are we going? Well, we're going into um, a little more technology. Uh, lots of kids are, have their own cell phones now. We're doing a lot more, <coughs> excuse me, programs dealing with technology, like I mentioned earlier, coding, a uh, lot of uh, online games that are becoming, like Minecraft, are going into the libraries. Libraries themselves are here to stay. Uh, books are here to stay, but they're in different formats now than they used to be necessarily. Uh, you can download a book. You're still reading, you're, you know, but you're doing it in, in a, a different form than, than the basic, you know, book. I always say that books were the original um, random access. You can open it to anywhere. You know. It's a brave new world. Yes, it is. Susie, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. I very much enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. The West Virginia Library Commission encourages lifelong learning, individual empowerment, civic engagement, and an enriched quality of life by enhancing library and information services for all West Virginians. For questions or comments regarding topics on this show, please do not hesitate to call us at 1-800-642-9021 or visit us online at www.librarycommission.wv.gov. To keep you updated on library happenings in the state and beyond, the West Virginia Library Commission uses the WVLC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, and the Library Lookout newsletter. If you haven't liked us or followed us on social media yet, please do. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. We want to thank Susie for sharing her time and expertise, not only on today's show, but for the past 17 years here at the West Virginia Library Commission. Susie is retiring this year, and I know I speak for everyone here. Thanks for all the hard work. We're going to miss you. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.